Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is an honor and a pleasure for me to introduce someone I'm proud to say is a close partner of the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, as well as a close friend, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Abdul Basset. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Amb Ambassador Abdul Basset is presently serving as Pakistan's ambassador to Germany. Ambassador Basset is a graduate from Edwards College, Peshawar, and completed his master's degree in international relations from Qaid e Azam University, Islamabad, in 1981. He joined the Foreign Service of Pakistan in 1982. During his career so far, Ambassador has served in Moscow, New York, Sanaa, and as Deputy High Commissioner in London in the year 2003. Before taking up his first ambassadorial post in May this year, Ambassador Basset was serving as Pakistan's Foreign Office spokesperson in Islamabad, as well as additional secretary for Europe and the FODP. He has represented Pakistan at various international conferences and participated in important multilateral negotiations on arms control and security related issues. The ambassador's lecture this evening is on the topic, cultural bridges between Pakistan and Germany in the context of globalization and multiculturalism. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very warm and uh, heartfelt uh, welcome for the ambassador, His Excellency Amb Ambassador Abdul Basit. Thank you. Thank you very much, and rest assured, I will be all political uh, this evening. <clears throat> uh, let me, before I uh, dwell on the subject uh, given to me, uh, just give you a few uh, thoughts on multiculturalism itself. Uh, when, uh, on 7 July 2005, uh, terrorists uh, struck London uh, I was uh, Pakistan's Deputy High Commissioner there. And uh, I think two or three days after that, uh, those tragic uh, bombing attacks, bomb attacks, uh, my High Commissioner uh, was summoned, not summoned, but called uh, to the 10 Downing Street uh, by senior is, is, is staff, uh, officers or people who were dealing with that issue at the moment uh, of the former Prime Minister Tony Blair. And the High Commissioner very kindly uh, asked me to accompany her. So we went to uh, 10 Downing Street and uh, uh, to our surprise uh, we were told about First of all, we kind of, you know, expressed our cons uh, condolences to, to, to 10 Downing. Uh, and then the conversa conversation continued. So it was pointed out to us by one of the uh, advisors that most of uh, uh, terrorists who perpetrated that act were British Pakistanis. And uh, the government of Pakistan um, had to uh, cooperate, collaborate uh, with the British government in order to uh, get to the bottom of the things. So my High Commissioner uh, asked uh, whether uh, those uh, terrorists uh, whose names were being mentioned in the media, were those of Pakistan origin or Pakistan heritage. Uh, our interlocutors uh, paused a little bit and then replied that most of them were of Pakistan heritage. Now here I'm trying to draw a distinction uh, between uh, Pakistan origin and Pakistan heritage. Then the High Commissioner replied that if those were of Pakistan heritage, then how Pakistan was really involved, uh, or how you were asking us to uh, really cooperate or coordinate with, with your authorities to get to the bottom. Because those uh, young people, they were born in Britain, uh, they were raised in Britain, they were educated in Britain. So how come you are putting the onus on the government of Pakistan for their misdeeds. Now here, there is a distinction, obviously, uh, and most of multiculturalism 
as we talk, uh, uh, as we take it, uh, is about these fine distinctions. One can easily say that uh, multiculturalism uh, has failed. And we have seen that following that particular event, the British government immediately shifted its focus from multiculturalism to community cohesion. And it was no surprise when Prime Minister Cameron last year officially declared multiculturalism as a failed policy. Now, it is very easy uh, for uh, host governments who host foreign ethnic communities uh, to declare anything. But the question is whether multiculturalism is a good thing or a bad thing. Now, we are taking multiculturalism as we understand it in the context of Western Europe or, or, or the West as a whole. And most of the communities which came to these countries, including Europe, after the Second World War, uh, whether they be uh, Turkish uh, people coming to Germany in the 60s as guest workers, or uh, Pakistanis going to the UK uh, in the 70s as laborer, as blue collar workers, or Pakistani professionals going to the USA in the 50s and 60s as professionals, doctors, engineers, and so on and so forth. Now, the question arises whether multiculturalism in its essence is a good thing or a bad thing. Now, first of all, multicultural presupposes that there are many cultures existing in a society and it's an acknowledgement that there are other cultures as well. Now, these diverse cultures may also exist in a country. For example, you take Britain. Uh, there are diverse cultures. If you go to England, you will find a different culture. You go to Scotland, uh, you will find a different culture. You go to Wales. And it is no surprise that in 2014, Scotland would be having a referendum whether or not they would like to uh, remain uh, in the UK. So there are diversities even within a society. But here we are talking about those ethnic minorities uh, which immigrated to, to the West following the uh, Second World War for economic reasons or for political reasons. There are many uh, uh, communities which have sought political refugee, uh, refuge, uh, asylum in these countries. And then there are refugees, for example, refugees from Afghanistan following the Soviet occupation in 1979, traveled around the world to seek uh, uh, refuge. So here, the question comes down to, in my opinion, when we talk about multiculturalism as to how, and if you see around the world, you will not find, mostly I would say, problems if there is, a, there is a community from Spain, community from Italy living in Germany, or community from any other European countries, even Poland or Bulgaria, Bulgaria or any other country. You would not really uh, face a huge problem. But when you have minorities or people, immigrants from countries, from backgrounds, which are ostensibly not in sync with your value systems, there the problem arises. Now here we are talking about Muslim communities, to be honest with you, let me go candid with you. When we talk about multiculturalism, it is more in the context of Muslim ethnic minorities, be them from Turkey, be them from Pakistan, or from any other country, Islamic country. Now in the past, uh, and it's a problem. It's a problem because Islam is a religion. Uh, and let me say, uh, frankly, uh, 
has a value system which, which may not be uh, in, to, in sync with your value system per se. Now let me explain. Uh, as we have seen uh, recently, uh, a, a judgment or order by a Cologne uh, court about circumcision. Uh, that is now part of our, integral to our religious belief. Whereas you look at that problem through the prism of human rights. Uh, but for us, that is not really a human rights issue. Uh, it's a religious issue. Now here comes the conflict. For you, for a liberal democracy based on uh, universal uh, declaration of human rights, for you it is, you see the issue of whale from a different perspective. Whereas we look at that issue from entirely a different outlook. So we do have divergences in our outlook stemming from our respective religious beliefs and faiths. I am not saying here for a moment that they cannot coexist with each other. They have been coexisting with each other for centuries and I am sure they will continue to coexist in one way or another. I am not saying that there is some clash of civilization, not at all. But the question is that if three over three million Turkish or German Turkish are living here in this country, how you would like to treat them? Because multiculturalism in its essence it's not about 100 people, foreign ethnic group living in, in Germany or in UK. When we talk about ethnic groups and when we invoke multiculturalism, that is obviously done on the basis of vast minority, sizable minority. When you have four to five million ethnic minorities living in your country and your overall population, total population is 60 to 70 million people, then you need to think about it as to how these three, four, six million people uh, can be accommodated, can be more made more productive to your national life. But unfortunately, multiculturalism as it has been practiced in the West, while it does accept, acknowledge that there are different cultures uh, and they have to be acknowledged, that has to an extent promoted not as we say syncretic culture but fragmentation in our societies, in western societies. Whereas the idea inherent in multiculturalism is to promote syncretism, amalgamation of all cultures to produce a better culture. But unfortunately instead of promoting that, Multiculturalism, especially in the UK, because multiculturalism has never been practiced in Germany, in my view. But in the UK, it has the counter uh, result in the sense that it produced separate communities. But on the other hand, if you study the UK system, Pakistani a number about over 1.3 million of Pakistan origin or Pakistan heritage people. And the UK has produced brilliant uh, members of parliament even uh, from pa Pakistan origin in their system. As a matter of fact, uh, as a result of the last election in the UK in 2008, for the first time a Pakistani woman, a Pakistan origin woman was appointed as co-chair of the Conservative Party, Ms. Uh, uh, Baroness Saida Varsi, who is now the minister uh, in the foreign office there. So that system has produced, encouraged to some extent, members of the ethnic minorities to come and climb the social ladder, political or social ladder. But at the same time, it has not produced the desired result. The desired result in the sense that if you go to the UK, uh, you would still find uh, people, uh, ethnic minorities feeling more comfortable in interacting with each other. They have their own clubs, they have their own even uh, schools in, in Britain, uh, which are funded by the government, community schools, which are part of the main education system in the UK. They have their own community centers, so they hardly uh, 
ethnic minority communities hardly come across with the ma majority uh, or the mainstream community. So hence, multiculturalism in the UK particularly has not produced the desired results. So now there is some thinking going on as to how to produce community cohesion because globalization has brought about so much uh, influence uh, or it has impacted in so many ways uh, our, our daily life, uh, both individually as well as collectively, that it has become absolutely important to think of innovative ways as to how ethnic minority groups can be accommodated or encouraged to create synergy, syncretism, as I said earlier. So this point I wanted to make because it is important in the context of understanding uh, uh, multiculturalism as it is being practiced. Uh, now, obviously, uh, you here in, in Germany, uh, there are over 4 million uh, Muslims live in this country. And German, Germany has always made an effort uh, to try to integrate them uh, because integration and assimilation is slightly different uh, than what you have in multiculturalism. It is also different uh, than what you have in the US because the US system is based on a kind of a melting pot where all uh, immigrants are supposed to be part of that pot, uh, melt into that and become part of that pot. Because without that, uh, you cannot really move forward both as individually and collectively. Whereas in, the, in Europe, uh, countries are slightly different. I gave you the example of the UK. Uh, they did practice multiculturalism for a while. Now they are looking for other ways as to how to integrate uh, uh, ethnic minorities. But in Germany, uh, they look at this issue slightly differently because German as a nation state would not like this, uh, uh, their nation state concept to be weakened in any way. Uh, and they do see, uh, in my view, I may be wrong, but in my view, they do see uh, ethnic minorities, especially <clears throat> from developing countries, and also, especially those uh, minorities uh, which have a Islamic Muslim background, slightly uh, uh, out of tune uh, with their overall national ethos. So it is a big challenge for them as to how to uh, promote, sorry, how to promote uh, policies which lead to their integration, if not assimilation uh, into the society. Uh, and I must uh, admire them because over the years, uh, Germany has been very successful uh, in promoting that culture uh, in a way that also preserved their uh, German uh, nationhood uh, in its totality. Though there are challenges here and there, but at the same time uh, in Germany, uh, issues are more about, uh, uh, not about promoting multiculturalism because that in any case would be against the very spirit of uh, nation state. Uh, but they have tried to accommodate uh, ethnic minorities to and their cultures to exist side by side with the mainstream culture. Now its results will be more pronounced or clear uh, perhaps 20, 30, 50 years down the road because when first generation comes it has its own problems, its own difficulties. And as you know, you have second, third generation, things become more clear, uh, get clearer in the, uh, with the passage of time. So we do not know at this stage uh, as to how uh, uh, Germany's uh, uh, attitude towards its ethnic minorities uh, has uh, whether it has produced the des desired results or it has created more wedges or more chasms uh, within, the, within the society. 
So it is I personally feel because it's a generational process, it takes time. Because even Pakistanis who live here, about 75,000 Pakistanis live here. They may be Pakistanis or German Pakistanis or Germans. Uh, now, the first generation which came to Germany in, uh, in the 60s or 70s, they worked very hard, they struggled very hard and tried to make, you know, uh, both ends meet. The second generation, uh, they tried to put them to German schools, learn German, and try to be part of the mainstream. Now, challenge for us, you know, it's in reverse, because from our perspective, 75,000 uh, Pakistan of uh, Germans of Pakistan heritage, they're an important tool for us in the sense that they provide us an organic link between Pakistan and Germany. And the challenge for, as Pakistan's ambassador for me is, how to keep the second and third generation in touch with their, uh, their country of heritage, if not origin. Uh, and that is a challenge which I face on a daily basis. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, when it comes to Pakistan and Germany, uh, I can tell you that multiculturalism has no place when it comes to Germany. Uh, what we are trying to have is more cultural links between Pakistan and Germany and to use our community, uh, Pakistani community in Germany, to play a role in the sense to create more awareness of our culture and create more understanding here in Germany uh, of our culture, of our difficulties, our problems and to mobilize the Pakistani community to achieve that objective. Now, Pakistani community uh, as a whole in Germany, as I said, originally came in the 50, 60s, 70s, and they, are mostly, they were mostly in blue collar jobs. But now as they progressed, uh, the second and third generation are now, they're different league. They are showing far better uh, understanding of the mainstream and they're trying to if not integrate, at least interact with the mainstream. Now, the problem with ethnic minorities, including Pakistani community here is that uh, they, uh, first of all, language barriers, now they're, they're no more there, I would say, because uh, all uh, second, third generation uh, German of Pakistani origin, they, they have been attending a school, so there is no problem. Uh, language barrier is no more there. But still, surprisingly, Muslim minorities in the West, they tend to feel more comfortable uh, interacting with their own people uh, from their own uh, ethnic background. And it doesn't surprise me at all when I see Pakistani restaurants here or Pakistani communities uh, celebrating together uh, their religious festivals like Eid or any other festival or during the month of Ramadan. Uh, so those barriers are still there. And here it is also important to understand what mainstream community is doing to reach out to ethnic communities, minorities. Because it is not a one-way street. Uh, it also depends on what the mainstream community is doing in order to understand the, uh, the uh, ethnic minorities in your respective countries. Unfortunately, uh, I do not see much of an effort uh, on that count uh, in the West as a whole. Uh, uh, and uh, you would not be surprised that following the 2005 uh, bombing in London, uh, there was a spate of visits to mosques in, uh, in, in Britain by British officials, politicians, and that was a kind of, you know, temporary uh, outreach program. Uh, they went to mosques across the UK to understand as to how people think, what people think, or Muslims especially think in the UK. But then it lost somewhere in the air. Uh, that whole effort uh, uh, kind of uh, whittled down with the, with the passage of time. So there is, unfortunately, I do not see any uh, specific uh, policy or uh, sustained effort uh, in the West uh, to uh, uh, 
to integrate uh, uh, and uh, not assimilate but integrate ethnic minorities, especially with Muslim Islamic background, uh, in, in the, into the mainstream uh, society. Uh, those, I think, we're still struggling with ideas, with notions, and uh, it will take some time for us to understand because globalization has its own dynamics now. Whether you like it or not, people are traveling uh, across continents. There are economic opportunities across continents, and these multinationals have created a new culture uh, for us. Uh, you would find many uh, Pakistanis uh, working in, in, in Deutsche Bank or in Commerce Bank or other multinationals, Siemens or you name anything. And there, because of economic reasons, they, uh, uh, they are either living in Germany or UK or any other uh, European country. So globalization has its own dynamics uh, and they are creating opportunities, but on the other hand, they're also creating problems because uh, countries like Germany with a very strong uh, national sentiment, uh, nationhood, uh, they are creating some challenges for the country as a whole as to how to accommodate these uh, mind, ethnic communities without really uh, impinging or weakening uh, the, the nation, uh, the, the, the national sentiment. And that is a challenge, and I do not know, I do not really have answers to these questions. Uh, but these are relevant questions which, pe which people ask. Because if you promote, let's say, you know, uh, uh, in Germany, there is, that, that is not the case. But in, in, in the UK, particularly because they did practice multiculturalism for decades. And there you find Pakistani a school or uh, Indian a school or Bangladeshi a school, you will also find even hospitals run along ethnic lines. You will find community centers, uh, mosques along ethnic lines. So there, there is too much division uh, along ethnic lines and there is no incentive to, uh, uh, to mainstream themselves. So in Germany, slightly as I said, things are handled differently, but at the end of the day, uh, I think it is important to understand as to how ethnic, ethnic minorities uh, are doing in a particular society because you would not like three or four million uh, people, uh, uh, members of your population to continue to be uh, dependent on your social system. You would like them to be as productive as the mainstream uh, people are. You would not like them to be uh, become a burden on your system. And that, I think, is important. You make them productive, to make them useful to society. It is important that uh, we uh, think through these issues and try to come up with some uh, tenable solution. Uh, multiculturalism, in my view, has failed. Uh, what we need to do is to promote interculturalism. Interculturalism uh, uh, is more about uh, cultures interacting with each other uh, because uh, that is a way not only to understand, not only to acknowledge and accommodate each other, but to understand each other. Because all our efforts to create super uh, cultures uh, have failed. Uh, you look at uh, Britain, uh, Britishness. What is Britishness? We do not know. That's why we still have problems uh, when it comes to Scotland. Uh, now, in the West, there is an effort, in, in Europe particularly, to create a European identity. And we human beings are a strange creature, you know. Uh, we have so many identities, layer after layer. Uh, sometimes we identify ourselves with a football club. Sometimes we identify ourselves with a city. Uh, sometimes with a country, with a region. So we can, we have the capacity to transcend our uh, innate biases and to identify ourselves with larger uh, concepts. But at the same time, uh, we are very stubborn when it comes to our uh, core uh, values. And that makes the whole task very difficult. So this is exactly uh, we are trying to do as uh, here in Germany. Uh, to uh, create more bridges between Pakistan and Germany 
and our 75,000 uh, diaspora in Germany plays an important role. Uh, and uh, uh, through exchange of cultural troupes, uh, uh, through exchange of uh, students, uh, we are trying to create that understanding. But how does that impact uh, our community in Germany? It's a different ball game. I tell my diaspora that more useful you become for this country, more helpful you can be for pa Pakistan. Because if you're not helpful, or if you're not useful for this society, how can you be useful for Pakistan? So it is fundamental that you mainstream yourself, try to climb the ladder up socially, economically, politically, and you have to do involve yourself in the political uh, system here. Uh, and I'm, uh, I do not know much about the Turkish community, but I do understand that there are people who have made uh, to the top in the sense that they are very active uh, in the political system here, and uh, which is good because the more they integrate themselves, they become active, uh, they can resolve problems of their communities as well and uh, be more productive uh, to Germany as a whole. But this is a question, these are the questions which came to my mind, I thought to share with them. Uh, I do not know to what extent uh, these have been relevant to your conference uh, on multiculturalism, uh, but I have more my own experiences and uh, uh, I find this task a very, very difficult task. And I think uh, no one has a solution uh, uh, to, because it's not one size fits all. Uh, you have to be uh, kind of, you know, uh, innovative about this and try to um, have approaches which are uh, which can work in a given uh, situation. Uh, so Germany has done a good job so far, but I do the real results will be uh, will be more visible, I think, uh, after 20, 30 years uh, because then globalization has also would have also played by by then its role, and we would then see whether uh, it is multiculturalism or interculturalism or uh, integration or assimilation, how things really go. So thank you very much for your, um, uh, your attendance to listen to me uh, very patiently. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, you actually uh, unintentionally complimented very well with the speakers earlier today. We had two members of the German Parliament where we also discussed this debate, uh, interculturalism as opposed to multiculturalism. Okay. So it actually fits in perfectly uh, to I the see. discussions we've had earlier today. And uh, we now actually, if you still would agree, uh, Your Excellency, have three different formats in which we can interact with the ambassador. I'd be happy to take a few questions and comments right now. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're going to do a brief interview, about 10 minutes, yeah. uh, on the second stage over there, sort of okay. where I have about four or five colleagues also to ask questions. Questions. And then at 6 o'clock, we have an interactive discussion where we'll be sitting in a circle. Uh, that'll be chaired by His Excellency Yasser Yakesh. And that would be a third opportunity, again, to engage in dialogue and, and questions. But before we move to the interview, I'd be happy to take you know, at least one or two comments or questions from you. Uh, and as always, if you could briefly introduce yourselves when posing the question, please. Thank you. Uh, your Excellency, thank you very much for your uh, very enlightening uh, presentation. It's my second time that I listened to you. I listened to you last week again mm -hmm. here. Uh, uh, you've, you've touched upon many very, very uh, controversial issues and concepts. And I'm really surprised to see that you're more optimistic than some German pol uh, pol uh, parliamentarian concerning uh, multiculturalism here in Germany because I see it differently and they see it differently as well. Most German like politicians think that uh, multiculturalism in Germany has failed. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that like the UK uh, approach to multiculturalism failed in a way. I do believe that like multiculturalism in Europe has failed, not only mm -hmm. in the UK, but in Europe vis-a-vis -vis other parts of the world. You also touch upon the US which in which, you, uh, as you mentioned, it's melting pot. It's uh, more of assimilation. Uh, uh, I was wondering why wouldn't you uh, touch up in Canada because I think Canada is the best model of mo uh, multiculturalism, yeah. which is in which like multiculturalism uh, takes uh, probably the best form. Yeah. My question now is uh, thank you. My question is um, 
with, uh, because you talked also about Muslims, and there is one thing that probably we tend to forget when we talk about uh, Muslims. We always think of Muslims as Arabs, that like not all Muslims are Arabs and not all Arabs are Muslims. Muslim. And that's something we need really to take into consideration when we're referring to these categories. Uh, my question is, in the past, probably like three or four decades, Northern Europe used to look up in Southern European countries and people as the other mm -hmm. from a cultural studies yeah. uh, point of view, <laughs> uh, like the other as uh, being exotic, as being different. But then when they give them themselves the chance to, to get to know them, then they, dis they, they found out there were a lot of similarities in terms of history, civilization, race, and culture. Uh, and then now they, they see them as part of like who they are. Don't you think now we are at the stage where the West, and by the West I mean Europe, looks at the Muslims the way they used to look at Southern European? Now they look at us as that, you know, that strange, exotic other. And how much time do you think it will take them to reach the point that they reach it uh, toward the Southern European? And thank you. I wish I had a crystal ball, you know, to. <laughs> but this is exactly my point that. If you go through history, you will find, you know, even Europeans fighting among themselves. Uh, and now they have come to a point where they can talk to each other uh, and, and even think of a European identity. Uh, this gives me hope that though at present Muslims are, uh, are considered not even a stranger but extra stranger, uh, but globalization has its own dynamics. And uh, while, you know, on the one hand, globalization is creating synergies, bringing us together in different ways. On the other hand, it is also kind of, you know, stoking fragmentation. Uh, you see what is happening in the UK or what, what happened in the Soviet Union or Yugoslavia. There are more, Kosovo, for example, you know, more and other nations are coming up. Uh, but globalization, in my view, uh, eventually uh, would create more understanding, uh, uh, mutual understanding uh, about religions, about faiths, about cultures. And that gives me hope uh, that uh, if not, I said that multiculturalism is not the way forward because multiculturalism helps create separate communities. So I would propose interculturalism where cultures come together, they interact, they uh, come across each other and understand each other. So that is the way forward. I do not know what is going to happen, but it's a long-term process. Uh, it's a generational process. It will take 20, 30 years to understand or to, uh, to know as to how globalization has played a role in creating more understandings uh, and creating an environment where different cultures exist because uh, we are all seeking harmony in diversity. Unity in diversity is a cliche, so I would not use that. And that is perhaps uh, an, uh, uh, an objective which is elusive as far as I am concerned. But harmony in diversity, uh, we can live side by side, understand each other and try to, you know, uh, to create eclectic culture. Uh, which is again a utopian uh, uh, thought, but still, uh, when we live together, for example, in the UK now, tikka masala curry or what that has become a national thing, you know, instead of fish and uh, chips. Uh, so these are the things which can be borrowed from each other, and uh, there is no reason uh, as to why we shouldn't be optimistic about our world because human beings, we are strange creatures, you know, we can, we have the capacity. I will give you one example. Uh, following the floods in Pakistan in 2010, uh, the spontaneous response in Germany was from the people of Germany. And they raised, within two days, they raised $300 million for victims in Pakistan. So human beings have the capacity to come together in a times of crises. So one should be optimistic about, uh, about our future as a whole. Additional questions or comments here? Okay. Thank you very much for, for your lecture. It was really interesting for me. And for, for me, my name is Artur, and I'm from Latvia, and I'm intern here in ICD. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm from Latvia, 
uh, there uh, we also have minority majority of course issue because Russians and Latvians relations and there we use usually a four concept model it's integration it's when uh, both uh, communities majority and minority wants mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to interact uh, to each other then uh, of course assimilation when minority don't want to preserve their uh, own culture mm -hmm. but want to cooperate mm -hmm. with majority then uh, marginalization when uh, they don't want to preserve uh, uh, their uh, their own culture but don't want to uh, communicate with majority also uh, and segregation when they don't want to interact but they mm -hmm. want to preserve their culture so now comes multiculturalism and interculturalism of course multiculturalism is no, well, famous word, I know it, mm -hmm. but for me it was the synonymous for uh, inter uh, integration model. Mm -hmm. So I see that you, you, you disagree and you yes. put it uh, differently. Mm -hmm. So would you be so kind to, uh, to somehow operationalize, to put these two concepts in this, four co this model of integration, segregation and so on? So what is this difference, shortly, to repeat maybe once again, to yeah. clarify? So multi multiculturalism is different with integration, segregation, assimilation, and uh, interculturalism. Yeah, multiculturalism is very clear, you know, because you accept, acknowledge that there are different cultures existing in a society. And then you, the overall objective of multiculturalism may be, may be to promote integration. But unfortunately, uh, we, the empirical evidence suggests that multiculturalism has not promoted integration. Rather, it has worked uh, contrary to the objective. Uh, for example, I gave you the example of the United Kingdom, where multiculturalism as a policy was adopted uh, in the 70s and in the 80s. Uh, but instead of promoting uh, or mainstreaming the uh, ethnic minorities, what happened in the UK was that that created separate ethnic groups. It encouraged separatism rather than integration. They have separate community centers, separate schools. So those cultures, minority culture and majority culture never interacted. And then, you know, there is a tendency. Uh, and then again, it depends on the number. If you are 100 people, you know, living in a foreign country, then compulsions are different. But if you are in millions, then compulsions are different. Then you have the power, you think you have the power to preserve your culture and also inculcate that to your next generation. So then there are different compulsions at work. So integration is different from assimilation. Assimilation you, uh, you see in the UK, in the US, they think it is assimilation, but there too I don't believe it is assimilation. But their concept is different because the entire American community is uh, immigrants, you know, is, is constituents of immigrants. So their, uh, their philosophy is totally different. But here in the U, U in, the, in, in Europe, uh, things, are, things are working differently. So integration, uh, integration means that you uh, still uh, kind of accept the reality of diversity in culture, but at the same time, and you allow ethnic minorities to, uh, be, uh, to be kind of, you know, to take pride in their culture and to practice it. But at the same time, you are also part of the mainstream. Uh, now that is a different, difficult call. But in Germany, you see that that has been put into practice in one way or another. So I'm more kind of when I look at my community, which is 75,000 Pakistani diaspora, I feel very encouraged because over the last three, four decades, they have come a long way, especially in second and third generation they are making uh, attempts to mainstream themselves, to, uh, uh, to uh, climb up the ladder, social ladder, to move incrementally, you know, uh, up the ladder. So here there are, uh, uh, there are different approaches at work, but I think we should be very clear in our head as to what do we want from ethnic minorities. And as I said earlier, um, uh, responsibility is also on the majority community, the mainstream community. How much effort you make to reach out to minorities, to try to understand them. How many of you, uh, for example, uh, go to Germans or uh, go to Turkish 
places here. I know Donar Kebab is very popular uh, in Germany, but uh, 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 how many you visit Turkish families? Uh, how much interaction is there? Because at work, uh, at uh, schools, it is good that German is no, Germany is not uh, practicing multiculturalism. Otherwise, you would have found Turkish schools here uh, giving their own education as happening in, in the UK. So here, integration is perhaps more effectively working in Germany. I do not know about Latvia, but Germany be, being a big country, uh, it, it has resources uh, and uh, it is working more effectively as compared to other countries. But what happens over the next 30, 40 years, we do not know. But my own uh, uh, take on this is that uh, we should be optimistic because uh, economic compulsions, globalization uh, is changing our world very fast. Uh, and there are opportunities for everyone uh, because now there is uh, immigration you know, taking place in reverse. Uh, people are now traveling to China, to other uh, countries where they find more economic opportunities. I was reading an account of a uh, British national who left Britain and now living in China because of economic opportunities. So uh, economic compulsions are very important. Uh, and uh, the fact that in Britain, for example, because there is a concept of dual nationality uh, in Britain. I can be Pakistani, I have two passports, I can be Pakistani and I can also have a British passport. So I can travel on two passports. But here in Germany, they, that concept is not there. So here, possibilities of, uh, possibilities of integration are more, uh, uh, they're more pronounced as compared to other countries in Europe. Your Excellency, on that note, uh, I'd like to thank you for, on the one hand, you. your clarity and honesty in terms of dealing with the challenges that still exist uh, in Germany and also around the world, but in particular for your optimism in terms of seeing also the way things are going. We also at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy see this as a chance, uh, whether it's interculturalism or multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciated the, the keynote address as well as the, the questions afterwards. Thank you. And I'd ask much. you to all please uh, help me uh, in expressing our gratitude to the ambassador. Thank, thank you very much. much.